With respect to the limited time we have here today, please, reporters, one question, perhaps a brief yeah. follow-up question. With remarks and updates today on the press conference, one county mayor, Jerry Billings, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, Dr. Raul Pino, Director of the Florida Department of Health here in Orange County, and with information on mass gatherings, okay, I'm seeing it. we will have Orange County Sheriff John Mina. You begin with Mayor Dennis. Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Williamson, and thank you to all of you for being here as we uh, update you on the latest developments regarding the COVID-19 pandemic here within Orange County. Uh, I had the pri privilege this morning to really uh, begin the first uh, meeting of our Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force. Uh, the members are charged with coming up with a safe and sensible way to reopen Orange County. The task force will, will be provided um, several, and let me correct that. The task force uh, will be divided into several different work groups, and the next overall group meeting will be uh, next Tuesday, the 28th of April. They will help create guidelines and protocols for businesses to reopen, assist with businesses uh, and their readiness and compliance. Uh, they will assist us in terms of monitoring and working to bring tourism back to our area. The task force will work at a brisk pace to come up with solutions. We want to reopen Orange County really as quickly as we possibly can, but also balance that out with the health and safety needs of our community. Uh, this reopening will undoubtedly uh, occur in phases. In other words, the phase reopening will not happen overnight. Uh, it may take several weeks before we see major businesses reopen. Uh, Governor DeSantis uh, has a, a statewide task force that has been working. Uh, we will ensure that the plans that we develop here locally will dovetail with those of our state and uh, also comply with the guidelines issued by the White House. Uh, we cannot get ahead of the state or the White House in, in this regard, but we do want to ensure that what we do here locally is unique to our particular experiences here. I was very encouraged by what I heard on the um, webinar conference call this morning from the various business partners. Uh, they are very anxious to get moving with the work uh, before them. Uh, we hope to uh, pick up the pace and next week have multiple meetings and subcommittee meetings as that moves forward. In terms of um, where we stand today with Orange County, Orange County has 1,251 um, confirmed cases of the coronavirus within our county. Uh, that is up from yesterday. We have one additional death. Sadly, there are 28 individuals who have died of the virus within our county. The average age of our residents who have tested positive is 46 years old. Orange County has now administered uh, nearly 19,000 tests. Uh, Camping World Stadium was the site of the day with nearly 350 tests. Many of our constituents who live in West Orlando had uh, requested to have a site in that area and it appears that it has been a very active site today. All told, since Monday, however, over 700 Orange County residents have been tested by the Florida Department of Health at uh, the various mobile sites. Uh, Dr. Pino will talk more about that in just a few moments. Last night, Orange County received 2,000 collection kits from the Florida Department of Emergency Management. Our goal is to get these test kits into the hot zones within the areas of the maps that you see here. We also Uh, we are in the process of finding additional testing sites near the hot zones, and we will share those updates as we uh, make decisions associated with that. Our Orange County Animal Services uh, continues to offer virtual adoptions for pets through its website and Facebook page. Uh, we ask that you learn about the new virtual adoption program uh, through our website. Um, there's a photo, uh, I believe, that is, where is it? The photo is over here to the left, your right, uh, of Kiara, one of the dogs up for adoption. 
Since the recent virtual adoptions launched, uh, Animal Services has facilitated 22 cat and seven dog adoptions uh, through the new program. And since the launching just last Thursday. More than 225 people have reached out to inquire about the program. Uh, thank you for finding forever homes for our local animals in need. Also, let me acknowledge uh, yesterday uh, West News for helping to raise over $1 million for a second harvest meals on a daily basis right here in our community. And while we understand that, that certainly has been something that is well needed. I also have to acknowledge our various faith leaders and faith-based organizations who have stepped up to assist our community during this time of need as well. And before I go to uh, Mayor Dyer, I want to wish the Central Florida Muslim community uh, the Ramadan Mubarak as they observe the holy month of Ramadan, which starts tomorrow evening. Ramadan, as many of you know, is a month of charity and helping the needy. But we have seen uh, various um, individuals within our Muslim community uh, work uh, really to provide uh, services to the needy. At the Islamic Center of Central Florida, food drives have been conducted every Saturday at 5 p.m. to help the families who have been affected by the pandemic. The Islamic Center also provides healthy meals to the homeless and is working with local hospitals to provide hot lunches for the health care workers, many of our health care workers in the area. At the Islamic Society of Central Florida, five different mobile food distribution uh, projects have been organized in Orange County. An average of 400 families have been helped between the Goldenrod and Pine Hills locations. Again, let me say thank you to all of those different organizations for supporting our community during this pandemic. And we wish everyone a happy Earth Day as well. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Dyer. Thank you, Mayor Demings, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. As we plan for what our new normal will be and strategically work on guidelines for when we can reopen, all the while we need to continue to stay at home, and it's important to remember that we do this while the virus is still here in our community. We know that there's not a vaccine that's been developed yet for COVID-19, and we know that there's not enough testing for everybody. So that's not debatable. Those are the facts. But at the same time, we recognize that as we continue to see declines in the numbers of people testing positive and also plan to reopen our community, there's a direct reflection of our control over the virus by our actions that we have taken by staying at home and social distancing and wearing face coverings. Our new normal, it's clear we will continue to take extra precautions. Many of these actions that we're doing today will need to remain part of our daily lives. We're going to have to be con continue to be diligent about hand washing and wearing face coverings when we go out. And we'll need to protect our most vulnerable among us, the most susceptible. And we need to continue to practice six feet of physical distancing. It's not going to change anytime soon. Our personal actions and responsibility be more important than ever when we open back up. We made a lot of progress, but we've got more progress to go. Today, I had the opportunity to see the mobile testing operation at Camping World Stadium in partnership with the Department of Health of Orange County. As I walked the site, I had the opportunity to thank many of the healthcare professionals that are out on the front lines that routinely go above and beyond to keep our communities safe. And I can tell you, Dr. Pino, that is one efficient operation going out there. I congratulate all the healthcare professionals involved in the mobile testing. There were 250 individuals that scheduled appointments and 250 were tested, but they also took walk-ups and I saw people biking up and all types of transportation. So there were another 100 done for a total of 350. So we're very thank thankful for that. And I want to thank all the workers from the Department of Health in the city of Orlando that had their commitment to make sure that was done. As a city, we continue to look at different ways we can help our local small businesses who have been facing unprecedented challenges. This coming Monday is our next council meeting, and we will provide 
some relief to our Main Street districts and their dis businesses. We have a proposal that allows the Main Street districts to draw down immediately the remaining city match funds that are made available annually, and it additionally allows the dollars that were previously dedicated for beautification projects within the districts to be put towards COVID-19 recovery and support for small businesses. With the small businesses being the backbone of our local economy, we want to do everything that we can uh, to bring them back to prosperity. I know there's a lot of information going out every day about the virus, and we are committed to getting that vital information to every single resident in the city. I want to remind the public again that we have a dedicated web page that we have created on the virus at orlando.gov forward slash COVID-19. And the latest information is available in five different languages, Spanish, Portuguese, Creole, Vietnamese, and of course, English. Additionally, OLA, our Office of Local Assistance, remains open virtually, and residents can reach out there at 407-246-4310, 407-246-4310. Let me close by saying that we can't get back to economic health without ensuring our public health. We, um, the virus continues to be lethal. Uh, Mayor Demings noted uh, another tragic death. Each one of us has the power to keep the spread of the virus low and protect our most vulnerable. It's within each and every one, and I know we can continue to meet that challenge. I know Orlando residents are up for the challenge, and together we have imagined a great city, and we've made Orlando a great city, and together we can overcome these difficult times and make our city even better and help every person in our city thrive. Let's remain strong because Orlando, that is who we are. We are Orlando strong. Dr. Pina. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, as the mayor said before, uh, our count today, a cumulative count, is 1,251 positive cases with a 7% accumulative uh, positive rate. Um, that is the percentage of tests that return positive, and it's one of the key measures that we are watching over uh, for future uh, developments. And one of the indicators that perhaps will be used by the administration when gauging how the um, 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 reopening of the economy uh, may be performing against uh, the public health interest and see what's happening there. Um, we have tested, as the mayor said, um, over almost close to 20,000 people uh, in our county. I wanted to uh, go over uh, the recent addition to the death that we have in the county, and of course our condolences to those families. And at the end, the last case that I'm going to mention is a new addition. The mayors didn't know about it. I just got it. And it's not reflected in the data, but I'm going to um, uh, mention it to you because it will be there this afternoon. So we have a 42-year-old male, Hispanic, uh, the youngest uh, person so far to have such a negative health outcome. And um, our condolences to his family. Um, um, the exposure was a contact with a COVID person, a positive COVID person, and that we know uh, didn't have any other uh, pre-existing health conditions. We have a 95-year-old uh, male, Hawaii, and the exposure um, is not known and had uh, heart disease. We have a 72-year-old female, Hispanic, exposure is under investigation, um, had diabetes. Uh, we have a 60-year-old female, Hispanic. Exposure is also under investigation. We didn't know, or we don't know yet, if there were any health issues. 83-year-old male, Hispanic. The exposure is also under investigation, and we don't know any underlying health conditions. And the newest addition to that list um, is a 60-year-old male, Hispanic with exposure on their investigation. Uh, we also have the ability, as we told you before, we are starting to analyze the data a little bit more and now that we have sufficient volume. And with respect to, to death, and this is an important point to make about protecting the most vulnerable 
in our population? And also, as we reopen the economy, how can we be sure that those individuals are protected because they are the most vulnerable? And for example, 71% of all people who die had hypertension. About 53% of all people who die have cardiac disease. And about 47% have diabetes. 35% of those had had uh, chronic lung disease. As you can see, um, people with underlying conditions who are older than 65 years old are at greater risk for uh, poor health outcomes. We also, as the mayor mentioned, um, are being engaged in the mobile testing initiative that we have taken on. On Monday, we did 145 um, tests. And, you know, we were concerned because uh, we put so much effort into putting all this together, and we get kind of disappointed that the numbers were not that high the first day. So um, we got calls from the community because we had an issue in our messaging system, the message that was playing in the phone when people called. So we immediately called the contractor that's done through a contractor, fixed that issue to learn that the issue may have come up again today, but um, it was already fixed. And also we have an issue with appointments. For that to say that the day after we fixed it, we did 240 yesterday and we did 350 today. So um, please, with the response from the community and also that we are doing enough testing that justify moving all these resources through the county, which is um, not an easy task. Um, and for those who may have the time at some point, um, it would be good to see how these operations go, and we may put a video online uh, because it's quite interesting. Um, I also want to rectify a data that we offered uh, on Monday for the uh, long-term care facilities. When we mentioned those facilities, we say that Encore at Avalon Park had two cases. Um, they call us, they, we review the data, they only have one case. We were able to determine that that case was wrongly assigned to that facility, so that was fixed. Um, on long-term care facilities, we have 21 positive cases this far, uh, two deaths, and 11 uh, cases in long-term care facilities. Um, we will continue our mobile testing Thursday, tomorrow. We will be at Barnett Park. On Friday, we will be at, at West Orange Park. Um, we continue to get the question, will we do it again? It all depends on the resources. We may need a few days to accumulate enough testing kits because we get bit by bit. We don't get big shipments. We get 200 today, 300 tomorrow. And we will not be able to move all those operational and equipment if we don't have a guarantee test uh, collection supply. Uh, because it would be uh, unnecessary to make appointments and disappoint the community that way. So another thing that we are trying to do is we are um, scouting out uh, for a good site in Apaca. Uh, we got some requests uh, from the commissioners and the mayors that that's an area that is quite isolated in, in a corner of, of the county. So we will go there next week. Uh, we will announce by Friday, but probably Tuesday or Wednesday, if we can find an adequate location at POCA that I'm pretty sure exists, uh, we will be there. With that, I'm passing to Sheriff Mina. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pina. I, I know many people have seen uh, news reports of protests happening around the country, uh, including one happening uh, right outside now and another scheduled uh, in Orlando this weekend. So uh, you know, we've received the question about why people are able to protest while stay-at-home order is in place. So we recognize people's right to engage in constitutionally protected activities. Uh, we, of course, would urge people uh, to please follow uh, social distancing guidelines that have been set and wear face coverings uh, when they are in public. Uh, protesters, protesters are allowed to peacefully exercise their First Amendment rights. Uh, but let me be clear. Um, we will not stand for anyone endangering the lives of others, the destruction or defacing of property uh, in our community. So my advice to the community at large uh, would be to stay away from any large gathering and especially any gathering where people are not following the guidelines uh, that we as a community have been committed to for nearly a month and have shown 
these great results of, of flattening that curve. So at this time, uh, as far as the Orange County Sheriff's Office is concerned, we have uh, six deputies who have tested positive. Three are already back to work. We've had no hospitaliza hospitalizations, and we're uh, continuing all those measures that we have put in place to keep our deputies safe so that they can keep our community safe. Uh, so overall, we're seeing a reduction in calls for service countywide, and uh, so that means uh, law enforcement is having that less one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction with members of the public. Uh, we are still urging people to adhere to a stay-at-home order and that the curfew is still in effect. Uh, in fact, we made an arrest this week uh, for someone uh, who violated the curfew. So the stay-at-home order is still in effect, and the, our curfew here in Orange County is still in effect. We want people to stay at home. So we appreciate all the great things that the Orange County residents have been doing to protect themselves from COVID-19. and. Uh, Please continue to stay home unless you must go out, wear your masks out in public, wash your hands, and practice good social distancing. Now is not the time uh, to let our guard down. Now is not the time to be complacent. We must stay vigilant. Uh, so as always, if you see violations, uh, please call our non-emergency number, and our deputies will respond and you know, give warnings uh, to those people and make sure everyone's adhering to uh, the orders that are in effect. Thank you. Mayor Dyer. <laughs> All right. Um, what we'll do at this time is uh, open it up for any questions that you may have, again, uh, to uh, our Spanish-speaking media uh, we do have uh, Commissioner Gomez Cadero. Thank you for being here today as well. And so if you have any questions in Spanish, uh, as we have customarily done, uh, you know, they will certainly respond to you as best as they can. Okay, uh, questions? Mr. Mayor, this is Steve Rudak from the Sentinel. Um, I may be a little ahead of ourselves on this, but from the, uh, the task force meeting today, um, there was suggestions or recommendations from um, the hospitals that uh, at some point uh, we're, we'll want to do universal masking and we'll want to do temperature testing. Uh, how can we adopt those recommended protocols like that um, without the necessary personal protection equipment and uh, those kind of measuring devices in business and then again I might be way ahead of us on that okay uh, it was a good question uh, the economic recovery task force uh, had um, an organizational meeting today and there was much conversation there uh, as I see it we do have to get um, further direction from um, the federal government about the types of uh, protocols that they will mandate from the state of Florida. This coming Monday, the governor's uh, task force will meet, and there's no doubt that there will be some written guidance that comes out from there. We will then take that here at the local level and begin to formulate a strategy uh, that helps to balance out um, the health and safety needs of our community versus the economic needs of our community. I do anticipate that the work groups uh, that will be put in place, the subcommittees uh, subordinate to the overall economic recovery committee, will make recommendations about what type of sanitary protocols will, will need to be put in place. And that will be based upon the type of business, uh, the I think the density of people who will patronize the various businesses and um, we will then come out with some directives here at the local level uh, that will have the blessings of uh, the Department of Health. We will work with the state and Dr. Pino in that regard to make certain that it works for all of us. All of our ultimate goal is to stop the spread of the virus and not put ourselves in any situation where we reopen too quickly or we reopen without having given the type of uh, instruction to our community to keep itself safe. In order for our community to be as safe as it possibly can, when the reopening occurs, 
it will require the, the, the wearing of masks and other things. And that means that we must have an adequate supply uh, to be able to provide such um, pieces of personal protective equipment to the citizens and the employees of the various businesses. As you know, we have struggled to get all of the various pieces of protective equipment and supplies that we really need. We've made appeals to our local manufacturing businesses uh, to help us in, in that regard. And, and I will tell you that some of the businesses have adjusted their business model and they're producing various things. You hear daily reports from uh, the president and other federal officials about an increase in the supply of um, said equipment. I do anticipate that as the days or the weeks move forward, uh, we will see additional supplies coming into our community, which suggests that even if we wanted to open up tomorrow, that will have catastrophic results because we have not yet adequately prepared to do that. And the worst thing that I think any of us want to do is relive this experience again at an even worse um, result than what we have are already experiencing. So we have to listen and take the guidance of our healthcare and our medical professionals. We can't make the decision to reopen just based on our desire to restart the economy. That's not the right balance that we need because if we have epic failures in terms of how we reopen, what we could indirectly see is many, many more cases, many more deaths, and an even worse impact on our economy if we did not move forward in a judicious, uh, well thought out manner. So that's what I'm trying to do as the mayor of Orange County is to work across jurisdictional boundaries to work within our region because our labor force here comes from uh, multiple counties. And so we have to have a consistent approach across county lines in order to have the kind of outcomes that we all are looking for. And to me, success will look like we're able to open our businesses and we have zero to no new cases reported on a daily basis because we all have done our part. Uh, so I don't want our local government to fail. We want to get it right. And so we're taking our time to make sure that we get it right when we open up our businesses. And so we just ask for the public to have the kind of patience that is needed in, in during this pandemic. We all have to work together. We're not, we're not working uh, in, in opposition to each other. We're, we're working. You heard Dr. Pino uh, say a few moments ago with the new deaths that were reported that he talked about since we had our last press event two days ago. You heard a significant number of the individuals were elderly. Uh, if you were listening like me, a significant number of them were Hispanic. That means that we uh, have to improve uh, the communication within all demographics of our community and say to them, you should desire to get tested. Okay, You must get tested uh, so that you do not inadvertently spread it to others within your particular family. So while the numbers are encouraging and uh, the curve is flattening, uh, there's no time to rejoice at this point. There's no time for our community to take our feet off the pedal and, and, and stop uh, 
trying to impede the spread of the virus in our community. So it's a long way to answer your question, but I want to make certain that you understood precisely where I'm coming from. Okay. Other questions? Uh, Lauren Cervantes, WKMG News 6. I have for Dr. Pino. Um, two questions. Dr. Pino, you had said that you had a slow start this week with the mobile testing, but that you guys were fully booked all 250 appointments today. Do you feel you've selected the right locations for the mobile testing sites? <clears throat> it depends how you measure that. If it's by the number of people who are showing up for testing, I think it has been successful, except for the first one, but I think it may be attributable to those uh, glitches that I told you about. So more likely we will return to that location without glitches so that everyone uh, can be tested, uh, everyone who wants to be tested. And um, it's a difficult, I, I mean, we will look at the data when we finish this week and see where people are coming from. We are collecting their zip codes. Uh, so we can have an idea who are we attracting to the site, how close from the sites, are we getting people from the same locations that we are setting up. But also I think that the county, as the mayor mentioned before, is exploring, and they just got 2,000 kids, uh, exploring their ability to do more surgical precise strikes in smaller locations. And what I mean, most smaller location, I mean smaller operations, like an assistant church or community center or community health center, where the operations are not that uh, much of engagement from us. My follow-up question, you had mentioned, well, like, earlier I had heard that there weren't enough tests to continue mobile testing next week right now, uh, but you mentioned you're scouting a location in Apopka. Would that be for mobile testing? And when do you, would you know if, if that will resume and when that would be? Uh, the, the location for APACA will be mobile. And um, we got into a deal with uh, the supplier of our test kids, uh, Beg a Little Bed, and they gave us another 250 so that we can do APACA. Uh, they were not initially in the, in, the, um, in the role that we were following. But yesterday I have an exchange with the commissioner, and I don't have her name that represent that area. I haven't memorized all that yet. And um, she was arguing about, you know, having these in Apaca, and the mayor also has made emphasis in reaching to areas that may be a little bit out of the uh, beating path uh, for transportation, and so that's why. Sonica Dange West, too. I have a question for you, Dr. Pino, too. Uh, do we know uh, how many people in the county have recovered from coronavirus? That is to say, perhaps how many people have been treated and released from a hospital? We know how many people have been discharged, but that's why we don't use the word recovery and offer that data. It could be offered, but it's going to be very inaccurate. And why? Because we don't follow individuals through the evolution of the disease. We follow those who are hospitalized, we can see it electronically, and also those who get discharged. But it would be safe to assume if we want to get a, a level of those numbers and what could be, if we, if we subtract the number of death, and if we subtract the number of people who acquired the disease more than 14 days ago, then we could have an approximation to what that number is. And it's going to be probably, I would say, close to 600,000, uh, 600. Um, our numbers have not increased in the uh, last few days at the rate that they were increasing. Remember, when we were coming to you two weeks ago, numbers were doubling every 72 hours. Right now, the additions are 20 cases, 15 cases every day, 25. So in that range, which was at where we were at the beginning of the curve going up. So with that, yes, that number, and maybe I have to calculate it because I, uh, it has been asked several times. Although we in public health tend not to use that number because it can give a false, a false sense of safety because the epidemic is uh, four weeks in or a little bit more than that. And then, of course, the people that were at the beginning have recovered, 
because we have a slowdown progress, that number is going to be larger than the number that's getting affected, and people may get a full sense of safety. And as you can probably perceive from the data that we initially offer, the, the death are accelerating a little bit with respect to the beginning. But these uh, people, uh, and I will have to go to the data, are people that might have acquired the disease two weeks ago and were hospitalized for that time, and now they are having this poor health outcome. So those data have to be looked at it from a contextual perspective of what they mean. Okay, a few more questions. It's Samantha Sosa from Fox 35. Uh, Mayor Demings, given, given the explanation that you gave to Steve on his question, is it still reasonable to expect for businesses to open up on May 1st, even with those guidelines, once the stay-at-home order is lifted? Or is it possible that Orange County, based on our numbers, is going to extend the county-wide stay-at-home order? Uh, the question around the date that businesses will reopen uh, I cannot give you a precise date at this point because that really is the work of the Economic Recovery Task Force to look at the phased approach to how businesses will reopen. I don't believe that every business across the various sectors will open at one point on one day. Uh, I believe that that there will be a phasing of types of businesses that will open based on the data that we're seeing uh, here within our community. So it may be a phase of, it could be six weeks or so. Once, once a decision is made uh, to allow businesses that are currently closed to reopen, Depending upon the type of the business, that one particular type may open on a particular day and another type of business may open on another day. And some of the larger businesses, because of the scope of what they do, could open last. Uh, in order for us to uh, gather data and research about the rate of infection uh, as uh, that phased approach occurs. So if we open and we saw all of a sudden a significant spike or, or clusters in certain, certain areas, we have to be able to be flexible enough to adjust to know that the decisions that we have made regarding that reopening were the appropriate decisions to make. It has to be based on the medical science that they're seeing at the same time. For ordinary people who should be staying home right now and that order is lifted like will they obviously if, if certain businesses aren't open they're not be, going to be going to those but right now today people should still be adhering to the stay at home order the businesses that have been deemed non-essential should be closed uh, and they should remain closed until further direction is given uh, we understand the economic impact that this is having on our small businesses. But we have a, a, a public responsibility, a uh, human responsibility, uh, to protect human life at the same time. And so the government's role is to sometimes protect people from themselves. Uh, in the absence of having good information by which to make your own personal decisions, you can make the wrong decisions sometimes. And so our endeavor is to collectively provide you with enough information to make appropriate decisions. And I know that some people are, are getting frustrated, uh, but I think that's not the majority uh, who just say, I'm not going to wear a mask, I'm going to ignore the social distancing requirements, and I'm just going to continue to behave like nothing ever happened. Where they question the science, they question all of this, 
uh, that is being done. And there's a certain demographic of those people that are in our society. Uh, for those who uh, understand what is being done, and I truly believe that's the overwhelming majority of people in our community, they get it. They understand. And they are upset when other people come and are not um, exercising the various social distancing protocols. They get upset when people come around them and they're not masked up or, or they attempt to touch them. They get upset. And I don't blame them uh, because it's today you heard about several people who have died from it, many others who, uh, who have tested positive. So that's what I would tell you is that this has to make <laughs> Some common sense about, you know, when people say common sense is not common anymore, but I, I, I believe that people understand, the majority of people understand what we're trying to do, at least in this community. My question's for Dr. Pino, and then I have a quick follow up for Sheriff Nina. Um, Lauren Seabrook, Channel 9. So this morning during the task force meeting, I believe it was um, Advent Health that said they had currently 100 COVID patients, and I, I think Orlando Health maybe said 20. Is it possible, and do you guys keep track of how many people are positive in our community today so that we could maybe give people some different numbers that weren't like, this is how many people have been positive from the beginning. We could actually tell people, this is how many people are positive in our community today. Yes, uh, we can, again, it's the same data about our recovery rates. Um, we could easily calculate how many people have been positive in the last week. And because the transmission is every two weeks and most people develop symptoms by five, uh, you could safely assume that that's the number that we know. But we only will know those who have been tested. There could be many positive people in the community who are either asymptomatic or have not been tested. And that itself then will be another data that at that point, I, I don't know how useful it can be because it's not going to reflect uh, the truth of, of the behind the data, but that number can be offered. And Sheriff, my question um, comes from just a lot of frustrations that we're hearing from people in the community about the protest. I know you said you won't stand for um, them endangering other people's lives, but what about them endangering their children's lives? Because we see a lot of children out at these protests. No enforcement action that I could take as a sheriff and um, arrest that person. You know, we're just encouraging people to remain, you know, socially distant and and do those best practices. Um, you know, to to get involved in someone's constitutional right, uh, freedom of speech. Um, you know, would not would not be proper to take enforcement. So, you know, again, uh, we're not going to you know have people out here endangering uh, the lives of others who are not involved uh, in those um, activities. Laura, I wanted to follow up on the question that you asked Dr. Pino. You talked about uh, one of the conference calls this morning where Advent Health indicated that they had 100 people inpatient in the hospital at the time. Those are very, very sick people if they're hospitalized. And Orlando Health said they had 20. This is within the various facilities. By no means is that all of the people who have tested positive. That's just the ones who are very, very sick who had to be hospitalized. Uh, what Dr. Pino was suggesting to you is the known universe of everybody that's walking around that's positive, we do not know. <laughs> you know, they can, we can extrapolate from the data that we have and try to project that, but testing is what will give us, I think, more precision in understanding just uh, how much we are being impacted today by positive uh, cases in our county. Okay. Eric Sandoval with News 6. So this might be for Mayor Demings and Dr. Pino, um, so bear with me, and then I have a follow-up question for Dr. Pino. Um, Mayor, you made mention that, you know, five of the six deaths that were reported today were uh, Hispanic people. And Dr. Pino made mention that there might be um, efforts underway to get to different venues to open up different testing sites. Can you address that? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, requested additional testing kits uh, from the state. We received 2,000 uh, that use a platform where it's an oral swab as opposed to the, the nasal swab. 
Uh, so we were working today with our staff trying to understand uh, how we could strategically do additional testing in multiple different places within the county itself where we haven't been at this point. I believe that the success of the Camping World Stadium location was the fact that there were many people who could walk up. You heard uh, Mayor Dyer talk about people were able to walk up. So as we learn more about uh, this, uh, the, the demand, if you will, for testing, we have to take into consideration the location where the sites will be to allow for people to be able to walk to it. And so we're kind of understanding that as well. And uh, with the limitation of the, the number of kits that we have, collection kits in the community, uh, we have to kind of be strategic about how we utilize them. If we had an overabundance of testing kits and uh, people, staff, to be able to, to, to do the testing, we could uh, do 10 times what we're doing. But quite frankly, we don't. We're limited by the number of tests. So uh, my efforts have been daily <laughs> to try to get additional supplies from the state, which at this point, for those of us in the public sector, they control it. Uh, the private sector, our private sector hospitals uh, are increasing their level of testing. Uh, the site at Millennium Mall, that is being uh, managed and operated by Advent Health. Uh, and it seems to be a good location uh, based upon the number of people who are being tested there on a daily basis. So, uh, 3282, it's, it's still a challenge. 32822 is still a challenge, but we'll go back. You heard Dr. Pino say that uh, the goal was never to stop doing testing in that area, but uh, to well, you leverage what we have today. So at some point, we'll go back into 32822 or somewhere thereabout in order to do additional testing. We, we still, you heard him talk about the strike teams and so we can do uh, uh, surgical-like uh, deployments of testing in our, with, within the entire county itself. So while the rate of infection seems to be down, uh, again, I still say it's no time for us to let off of the gas on the restrictions that we have in place. This place, this is the time for us to, to really reassess, to validate uh, what um, the assumptions that many people are making at this point. And Dr. Pino, can you address getting that message to the Spanish-speaking community? As we reported last night, there was some outdated information going out on the uh, Spanish-speaking hotline. You know, uh, how long did that outdated information get out, and what are you guys doing to make sure that the right information is getting to the right people? So um, we don't know what is happening. Um, so to explain a little bit, for our, for, for our phone system, we use a contractor. We don't manage our phone system. And it looks like they have a history of the different messages that we have taped over time. And for some reason, that they really don't know. It keeps bouncing back to an old message in Spanish that was placed there. And we were able to, uh, uh, Monday, to get off of the Hispanic message, and then when people place for Spanish, for the translation, it will send them straight to the uh, calling center instead of a message, because there we have bilingual people, so people will pick up the call and address it uh, pro properly. Uh, right now, it happened again today, so we may have to revisit who our contractor is and what kind of business we are doing if it doesn't work for us um, and for the community. Uh, but I've been told that it's resolved, but my IT person texts me that I should call him. So I, it may have to do with this or all the issues. Buenas tardes, Félix Pirela de Telemundo 31. Eh, doctor Pino, queremos saber, sabemos que la, la decisión final de reabrir la economía va a estar a cargo de los gobernantes políticos a nivel local, estatal y federal, pero sin duda los que manejan las estadísticas, los datos, las hospitalizaciones, los recuperados, son los profesionales de la salud y las autoridades de salud como usted. Y hoy estuvo usted participando en la primera reunión de trabajo para reabrir la economía. ¿Cuáles son las recomendaciones para cuándo creen usted que podría normalizarse la situación acá en el condado Orange, tomando en cuenta sin descartar 
un posible repunte de esta pandemia, pero ¿cuáles son las sugerencias del Departamento de Salud? Y la segunda pregunta sería, ¿las comunidades hispanas se siguen viendo afectadas por esta situación? ¿Cómo van los avances para trasladar estas pruebas a los sitios, a las comunidades hispanas, como por ejemplo el código 32822? Muchas gracias, doctor. So, to repeat the questions in English, um, the question was, what were our recommendations to the political uh, structure for reopening business and the economy in the county? That was the first question. The second question was, what are continuing efforts to be able to reach the Latino population uh, for uh, the mobile testing that we are taking? So, the recommendations are recommendations. Those are private recommendations. The highlight points And, and the basis for those recommendations are la pregunta en español perdona estaba sometimes the switch doesn't happen um, so la pregunta uh, la respuesta en español a la primera pregunta las recomendaciones que nosotros le damos a los alcaldes son recomendaciones en privado um, esa generalmente no pero hay varios principios que podemos tener en cuenta que pueden ayudar a tomar esa decisión el primer principio, no debemos ver el problema de la salud y el problema de la economía como en intereses que están compitiendo. No compiten, es el mismo interés. Y nosotros no podemos tener una buena economía si no tenemos personas saludables. Punto. Y Orlando, la economía depende tanto de la gente de Orlando como de la gente que viene fuera de Orlando. Nosotros tuvimos 75 millones de visitantes el año pasado. Es importante que la gente también sienta que es seguro venir a Orlando. Entonces, tienen que ser, las medidas tienen que ser inteligentes, tienen que ser graduales y tienen que ser de una manera que podamos retroceder si vemos que las medidas no, hacen, no están siendo efectivas. Y el alcalde habló de eso. Tenemos que tener la habilidad de retroceder un poco si vemos que alguna medida no ha funcionado. Hemos también pensado que las regulaciones van a ser diferentes para los tipos de business que la gente hace. Hay, 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 hay tipos de negocios que requieren que tú estés más cerca uno de otro. Pues esos negocios van a tener que tener medidas importantes para poder asegurar que el, el distanciamiento social y la prevención están pasando. Puede ser que parte de las recomendaciones sean usar guantes en algún tipo de guantes desechables en algún tipo de negocios en el cual requiere tocar muchas cosas entonces depende del tipo de negocio van a ser las recomendaciones los esfuerzos para la comunidad latina mucha mucha de la gente que ha venido a hacerse la prueba en estos días que hemos hecho son latinos um, después sabremos cuáles son esos números pero yo trasladé para muchas personas cuando estuve allí ayer, hoy y, y el lunes. Entonces tenemos un volumen importante. Lo que no sabemos es si son de ese código, el 2-2, que ha sido afectado. To recap uh, the questions, the answers in English. Um, to the fact that um, what were our recommendations to the mayors? And we said that the recommendations are recommendations that don't remain private, but I, I was able to talk about what are the principles that we should base those uh, reopening the economy on. And not to see the public health and the economic interest as separate interests. They are the same. You need to have healthy people to have a healthy economy. They just go together. They are not competing interest. And we sometimes tend to see this competing interest because the conditions that we have in place have um, put some um, stress in many of our, especially our small businesses. And part of the answer was also that we have to have the ability to be able to retract from some of the measures if we see that the data is not going in the right direction. So the measure has to be smart, has to be sensible, and it has to give us the space to evaluate the outcomes and to be able to adjust. And also mentioned that one of the principles also is that depending on the type of business may be the type of restrictions that you have to place on those businesses. And the mayor spoke about that, Mayor Demins. And there are businesses that require a close contact Let's say a nail salon, a hair, a massage, you are in touch with the individual. So that may require some type of different practices. Then in the places that offer some other type of business, 
like going to a gross, uh, to a gas station and pumping gas, or going inside the gas station and just picking a drink from the fridge. That's different to being face to face your barber, your hair salon, or your massage. So it depends, and it also depends on the volume. Um, it's not the same; doesn't have the same consequences. And infect a person in a business of ten people that an infected infected person in a business of two hundred thousand people. So those are the steps. The other part of the question was, what are we doing to continue reaching out to the Latino community? The answer was, we are reaching out to the Latino community. M many, many of the people who have been tested in recent dates in those mobile sites um, were Latinos. I, I translated for many of them. So we will have to look at the data to see who, the, who is coming and where they are coming from. But it is a large volume of Latino uh, population that is going to the testing sites. Thank you. The, this question is for Sheriff Mina. It's coming from Eric Mock from News 13. Um, he had a small business owner reach out to him in Orange County um, saying his landlord is threatening to revoke his lease because he hasn't been able to pay his rent. Now, we know foreclosures and evictions are suspended. Does this apply to businesses as well? And can he legally be evicted at this point? So, you know, when I uh, met with the chief judge and talked about evictions, um, you know, we decided that we were not going, our, our deputy sheriffs were not going to go out and evict people out of uh, their homes. Now, you know, since then, uh, the governor has suspended all of those evictions, and I'm not, I'm not positive that that um, applies to that situation there. I'm not the right person to answer that. Okay, and this uh, final question comes from Melissa Thomas with Florida um, National News. This one is for uh, Dr. Pino. She says, South Dakota will be hosting two major races this weekend because their governor is not enforcing social distancing. Will your team and other health officials be able to push back if you're pressured by the state or the president to reopen quickly or if the reopen policy is lax? Um, I don't think that push back is the word. Um, we will tell the truth, and we have told the truth here, and we will tell to the public how the data is behaving, how the cases are behaving, and people will be able to judge by themselves. But um, with um, our two mayors, um, I don't think that it will be a need to push. Our mayors consume data, um, and they are rely on those numbers and have rely on the advice of public health officials and clinicians uh, during this transition into this period. I don't think... Um, why will not they do the same um, in the way out? Uh, the only thing that I would add to what Dr. Pino just said is that we are working to ensure that we prepare our community for that re-engagement of when there's a relaxing of the social distancing uh, mandates at this point. Uh, there has to be, uh, I think, additional communication with our community about how that feels to everyone because, you know, this is an emotional uh, crisis that people are going through. And if we uh, don't carefully bring people along to where they feel comfortable re-engaging, they will not re-engage. They will not uh, get back to some sense of normalcy, if you will. So uh, part of our economic recovery um, task force's responsibility is to assist us in, in, in working with uh, the medical professionals on what the messaging looks like and um, how we're able to re-engage with one another. That makes sense. Okay, I know that uh, if there are uh, additional questions at this point, I, I don't see any, then what we'll do, we'll uh, conclude this part of the press conference and kind of move into uh, more of a uh, Spanish Response And so I'm going to ask, uh, as we do that, I know we may have to uh, change uh, our sign interpreters, and I'm going to ask one of my special assistants to come for Ms. Ilya Torres and uh, Commissioner Gomez Cordero. If you'd like to join us up here, uh, uh, please do, and uh, 
with Dr. Pino here, uh, the, the effort here is to make certain that we speak to uh, our Spanish speakers and they are able to hear uh, more directly from me. So uh, Ilya Torres uh, is, is going to uh, interpret what I say and she's going to put it in Spanish. <laughs> word for word, right, Ilya? Okay. As I started this afternoon, we talked about the fact that here in Orange County, we have impaneled an economic recovery task force that met this morning for the first time. The members are charged with coming up with a safe and sensible way to reopen Orange County. En la mañana de hoy, el alcalde sostuvo su primera reunión del equipo de recuperación económica del condado. Este equipo será responsable de tomar medidas sensatas, sensibles y en, en términos de fases para reabrir el condado y las operaciones económicas. The task force is representative of uh, a diverse group of business leaders. El equipo de recuperación económica eh, representa un grupo diverso de líderes de negocios y de la comunidad. They will help create guidelines and protocols for businesses to reopen. Ayudarán a crear guías y protocolos para que los negocios puedan reabrir. Los negocios del condado de Orange puedan reabrir. Uh, the task force will work at a brisk pace to come up with solutions. El equipo de trabajo trabajará un paso uh, adelantado para eh, tratar de lo más pronto posible eh, presentar soluciones. Our goal is to reopen Orange County businesses in phases. Eh, nuestro objetivo es reabrir las operaciones comerciales en el condado de Orange en fases. Based upon the types of businesses. Basado en el tipo de negocios. In other words, uh, the phased reopening will not happen overnight. En otras palabras, la reapertura de los negocios no pasará eh, de una noche a otra. O... It may take several weeks before we see major businesses reopen. Puede que pasen una cantidad de semanas antes que podamos ver la reapertura de los diferentes negocios. We will utilize the recommendations of the governor's economic recovery task force. Utilizaremos las recomendaciones del equipo de trabajo del gobernador que también se encuentra trabajando para reabrir y, y la recuperación económica. And the guidelines that came out late last week from uh, the White House. Así como también evaluarán las guías que emitió la Casa Blanca eh, la pasada semana con relación a la reapertura de los negocios. We see some health care disparities uh, and their impact on the positive tests within our county. Eh, hemos visto unas disparidades en términos de los eh, pruebas que han sido realizadas en nuestra comunidad. And so even after the pandemic uh, concludes, we still must endeavor to work to remove the health care disparities that existed prior to the pandemic. Aun cuando la pandemia, uh, cul cuando culmine, debemos seguir trabajando para eliminar esas barreras o diferencias en términos de salud. That will require local governments working with the state and federal government to develop long-term solutions to disparities within health care, within housing, within employment, within business, et cetera. Eso requerirá que varios niveles de gobierno local, estatal y federal continuemos trabajando de la mano para eliminar esas barreras o diferencias en el área de la salud, de los hogares, de los negocios, entre otras cosas. And uh, Commissioner Gomez Cordero, mm -hmm. uh, would you like to make any comments? No. No. Okay. 
Okay, so are there any questions uh, in Spanish uh, for uh, our Spanish speakers? Uh, Dr. Pino is here as well. Dr. Pino, would you like to share some additional information? Yeah, there are some requests. Uh, they requested online um, in Espanol. Ellos uh, han pedido en línea que uh, en los medios sociales que digamos en español la, la, la lista de los fallecidos uh, y eso es lo que vamos a hacer. El primero es una persona, era una persona de 42 años, uh, latino, y contrajo el virus uh, desde otra persona. No sabemos si tenía condiciones de salud uh, previo al virus. La otra persona es un, una persona blanca, no latino, de 95 años de edad, que tenía uh, problemas de salud del corazón. La otra persona es una persona de 72 años, femenina, latina. No sabemos las causas o cómo lo contrajo, pero sabemos que la persona era diabética. Tenemos una persona de 62 años, latina. Uh, también está bajo investigación cómo adquirió la enfermedad y no sabemos si tenía condiciones preexistentes de salud. Una persona de 83 años, latino, uh, está bajo investigación cómo lo adquirió y no sabemos si tuvo problemas de salud antes de la enfermedad. Y la última persona que no está en la base de datos pero que será incorporado esta tarde es una persona de 60 años, latino, uh, que también está bajo investigación. Nosotros nos comunicamos con ella. Eh, ella, después de la conversación contigo, tal vez nos envió un correo y uno de mis epidemiólogos conversó con ella y pudimos establecer uh, la identidad de una de las personas que sí pertenece a, esa, a, a, a ese centro. Parte, de, los, um, parte de, los, de las situaciones que se presentan con este tipo de cosas, y es para que la gente entienda, Si alguien llama al Departamento de Salud, nosotros no podemos decir es positivo o es negativo o sí o no. Nosotros necesitamos autorización de la persona que está afectada por la enfermedad para poder revelar los datos. Entonces, todo tiene su proceso y est estuvimos en ese proceso. Y sí, hay una persona que pertenecía a la facilidad y otra que no pertenecía. Pero tal vez lo que ha sucedido es que el administrador en el momento no lo sabía. No es que la persona haya actuado de mala fe ni nada que se le parezca. Yes. Mm? Okay, if there are no other questions, we'll conclude the press conference at this time. Muchas gracias. <laughs> and Dios los bendiga. <laughs>